one of the scariest places in exclusion zone is medical and sanitary unit number 126. Abandoned hospitals always give an eerie impression. The basement of the hospital makes a much creepier impression. It was there that the suits of the firefighters, who were the first to arrive and extinguish the fire and took on the strongest radiation impact, were transferred. But this is still a flower. In the area of Chernobyl nuclear power plant, it is a place cannot be visited even in a spacesuit. For 30 seconds there you can get such a dose, after which after you will feel dizziness and fatigue. Two minutes of radiation and you start bleeding. Four minutes later of vomiting and fever. So 300 seconds, you'll have two days to life. You're guaranteed a fairly quick death, which in this case is better than many other options. The Chernobyl Exclusion Dome holds many mysteries, most of which are hidden from prying eyes in the ruins of the plant itself. One of these mysteries, which for a long time tried to solve the researchers and liquidators of the consequences of the explosion, was a certain substance called elephant's food. But what is happening to this substance now has shocked some scientists. Even 35 years after the Chernobyl disaster, the remains of the nuclear power plant continue to radiate. Work carried out near the emergency unit seems to be having a negative impact, because in recent years there has been a significant increase in the number of signals from the reactor, especially in Unit 4. The number of nuclear fusion reactions has probably increased again. This data to give the impression that the number of neutrons in the specified area has almost doubled in the last four years. The Chernobyl nuclear power plant is surrounded by a massive structure called the New Safe Confinement. NSC. Hundreds of sensors are installed in this arch, walking around the clock. They fully monitor a number of important data. These sensors have transmitted information about increased neutron activity emanating from beneath the emergency reactor. The reason for the increase in fission reactions is not entirely clear. However, experts speculated that it is due to the trying out of several tons of corium located there. During a routine inspection on April 26, 1926, the reactor at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant experienced a power surge and triggered a reactor protection and shutdown system. But the reactor was not shut down. An attempt to contain the surge and the dangerous increase the core temperature led to an even greater power surge. Manual control rods used to control core temperature were inserted too late. When they were inserted into the core, they began to crack and became stuck. The temperature and power continued to rise until all the water used to cool and the reactor has vaporized, causing a massive increase in pressure. The first steam explosion in the reactor caused its lead. Wind 2000 tons punched through the roof of the power unit. The damage was catastrophic. The remaining cooling water from the destroyed channels rushed into the reactor and came into contact with the glowing fuel rods immediately turned into steam. Clearly, after the first explosion, there was another, more powerful explosion that threw core material into the air. Fire and the spread of radioactive residue began, and signs of the hot heart of the reactor was no longer protected by tons of steel and concrete. The core was no longer cooled. The meltdown began. The radiation background in 1986 reached thousands of virgins which was lethal to humans, but despite this, the liquidators managed to shut down the destroyed reactor. After the accident, the liquidators were never able to fully explore what was left under the rubble. The mass of radioactive fuel remaining in the unit caught 85%. By the fall of 1986, terms of liquidators were battling the nuclear disaster at Chernobyl had reached an underground corridor, the base of emergency reactor number 4. Underneath the reactor they found a black substance that leaked directly from the core. The substance was solid there and radiation detectors sternly warned the liquidators not to approach it. Pulled out a tripod camera from around the corner and filmed the mass, giving it the grim name of elephant's food. According to measurements taken at the time, the steel hot part of the molten rod emitted to such radiation that the lethal dose could be given in minutes. Corium lava in the Chernobyl nuclear reactor. When we talk about core meltdown, it's not just some metaphor. The radioactive materials used as fuel become increasingly hot due to the release of high energy particles, and this happens until they literally melt into something resembling lava. 
Chernobyl, the loss of cooling water caused the fuel to melt, some of which was released into the atmosphere. But another part of fuel flowed under the reactor into the pool, melting its base. A stream of radioactive lava that flowed through the pipes and burned through the concrete gradually cooled and solidified. The result was a cluster of stalactites and stalagmites covered with solidified lava, as well as a large black mass that was later called elephant's foot. This corium was also called Chernobylite, not to be confused with a monolith. Uranium rods consist of the zirconium casing and nuclear fuel, uranium dioxide inside. In the event of a nuclear power plant accident, when the temperature exceeds the maximum allowable limit of 700 degrees, the rod begins to deform. When temperature reaches 1200 degrees, the uranium rods melt, turning into a substance consisting of uranium and zirconium. Artificial lava differs in composition from natural volcanic lava. Specialists from the Argonne National Laboratory have recreated the corium to study it in more detail. On the internet, you can find interesting videos posted online by the particular laboratory. On these videos, you can see that the corium has even lower viscosity, which is not surprising because of the temperature of this radioactive sl slurry, more than 2000 degrees. While the usual volcanic lava is heated at best to 1200 degrees, the lab used more can a ton of uranium dioxide lava in some of its experiments to see how fast corium would break through a barrier like the concrete floor and walls of a nuclear reactor. It turned out to be very fast. Corium melts its way through concrete at the rate of 3 cm per hour. In addition, the researchers experimentally verified that water cooling may not be enough. Corium, destroying everything in its path, will escape in a matter of hours, despite active extinction. Both Chernobyl and Fukushima experienced it in phenomenon. Both nuclear power plant disasters reached the stage of corium formation, while the Japanese claim that the lava did not go beyond the nuclear power plant building, a fact, by the way, that has not been proven. At the Soviet power plant, control over the situation was undoubtedly lost completely. We already know for sure that it happened in Chernobyl. There are photos showing 3 meter high drips of solidified corium. Fortunately, the melting point of the concrete is higher than the melting point of the uranium rods, so the process of melting the concrete and mixing it with the lava cools the corium. Why so much attention is paid to finding the optimal composition of concrete for building nuclear reactors? But there is information that the floor under the active zone of the Chernobyl NPP is built of blast furnish, graffiti on concrete especially in case of possible mud spillage. Ordinary concrete itself would have melted long ago under the action of an elephant's foot, but as concrete resists for more strongly it heats up. Because the temperature increases the natural absorption coefficient of the graphite concrete. So why is corium so dangerous? Because the lava can go further than 3 meters outside the reactor, can it? We should not forget about the composition of the substance. Even when the corium is completely solidified, it will be very, very radioactive of many centuries to come. Measurements of radioactivity and gases emitted from the cooled Fukushima reactor have shown that the corium advanced more than half a meter through the reinforced concrete walls blocking and it during the disaster. The main danger of the Chernobyl Corium is that Unit 4 is scheduled to be dismantled in the near future. And in a future video, I will talk about the preparations are already being made there. The emergency reactor will be dismantled on the nuclear reactor rooms, and accordingly, the plan includes the corridors where the radioactive substance itself is located. But it is impossible to remove the melt because the reaction will instantly resound and the melt can start burning everything it, it touches. And there is no possibility to drag other absorbers to it because of its complicated location. It will come down to the fact that in certain areas that leg will have to be dragged without any protection, which will cause disaster on several levels at once. There will be people in the vicinity anyway. About the danger to humans. Radioactive atoms themselves are unstable. With elements such as hydrogen, there are no special problems, because its nucleus consists of a single proton. But with uranium, which is can isotope with 92 protons and 146 neutrons, 
we are less fortunate. The more radiation a mass of atoms emits, the more dangerous it is. According to information from Chernobyl, the elephant's food is able to literally and dosimetric devices. Having a radiation power of about 10,000 rogens per hour, a dose 10 times less is enough to kill a person. In a hour, you will get from the elephant's food such a dose, which corresponds to 4.5 million chest X-rays. In fact, the core information stage is a very rare phenomenon. It occurs only if there is a chain reaction of excessive amounts of highly active isotopes. But why did it happen at Chernobyl? The melting point of silicon dioxide is our 1700 degrees Celsius, zirconium of which the fuel element cladding is made, melts at about the same temperature and the fuel itself in them at the same temperature melts plasmagal. It turns out that, having left the reactor here, the melt crawled down. But because of the reduced heating, silicon dioxide crystallized water quickly, enclosing the nuclear fuel, which having a lower melting point, could safely continue to flow through the after the nuclear fire was extinguished, the liquidators attempted to contain the invisible threat posed by the emergency core. In May 1986, construction began of the sarcophagus, a giant concrete shelter designed to isolate radiation from the outside world. But it is not completely isolated. The noble sarcophagus has access points that allow researchers to observe the core and workers to re enter it. It wasn't until de December 86 that researchers descended into the underworld to study the elephant's food. Cross it reaches several meters, and as we have already understood, it emits so much radiation that it is impossible to be near it for longer than a few seconds. Even so, we have the closest possible pictures of this deadly mass, but from where? At a safe distance, the liquidation workers build some kind of device like a camera on wheels and move it to the minimum distance to the elephant's food. As a result of careful analysis, it was found out that it consists not only of nuclear fuel. In fact, the fuel day is only a small percentage, and the rest of the mass is concrete, sand and pieces of the lead. All of this melted in a single conglomerate of glass down. Over time, they began to notice that the elephant's food began to disintegrate, dust began to fly off of it, and cracks appeared on the surface. But over the years it has remained too dangerous to approach. We don't know what happened to those who photographed it. But we do know that no all attempts to study this mess were as safe as setting up a camera around the corner. In some of the pictures we see a worker directly touching the mess. The next attempt to touch the unknown was made by a member of the military. None of the researchers had time to think back, as one of the liquidators ran up to the elephant's leg and began to hit it with an axe. But the material did not yield. The truth is that I, like many people, am still worried about the fate of the soldier. After all, if the leg phonizes 14,500 rogens per hour, then in one second it will be about 4 rogens. How long it takes to run up to the shit and hit this with an axe? Only those who've even been there know. But either way, 12 seconds is almost 50 X-rays. If that's the case, probably dead. If it's less, it's an invalid. And the case is indicative and speaks about the level of informing the liquidators about the dangers of radiation. For the record, an nuclear worker can get 35 rogens in a lifetime. In special cases, 70 were allowed. That's those are in reserve. The person gets 50 rogens in a month or less, his death. This guy went from 5 to 50 rogens in a couple of seconds. Human curiosity made some specialists come back to it again and again. We have to take samples, we had to get as much information about this mess as possible. Although there is enough concrete in the Chernobyl sarcophagus to fill a third of the Empire State Building skyscraper. The structure is deteriorating over time, creating in rain introduced radiation to the surrounding area. And while the dumbbell shelter is now in place to prevent the airborne spread of radioactive material, it may not provide complete safety. Some experts believe that the elephant's food in the future may become a prerequisite for a new catastrophe. It is assumed that it continues to melt the concrete base under itself and will eventually pass through the concrete into the soil. From there, 
will be able to reach their water layers. This is in turn will lead to poisoning of underground water sources and even a new explosion. All of this is reminiscent of the so-called China Syndrome. In the 70s, it was customary to refer derisively to the fears of scientists who warned that the reactor core meltdowns could go beyond the reactor's containment. Of course, nothing with China but this corium did get beyond of the reactor shell, and it was no laughing matter then. But no, this Chinese syndrome won't go away. The temperature of the corium is still high, but not as high as an accident. But this material is not able to melt through the reinforced concrete. But it's a fact that something is happening to the substance, and probably the most important danger in the dismantling of the fourth block and the weakened structures of the wall building. More than 40 years have passed since Chernobyl NTP was built. Of this, for 32 years, there has been no careful inspection and repair of the plant structure at all. Time and the consequences of the tragedy could have led to cracking of the concrete foundation. Some experts believe the sarcophagus and shelter too have put additional pressure of the ground around Unit 4, and the foundation may simply collapse. As a result, the elephant's foot and other formation of Chernobylite will fall and fall into the soil, poisoning. First of all, underground water sources. In general, other experts are skeptical about this version, believing that the concrete foundation of the surviving iron structures of the fourth power unit are still reliable and will not let the corium seep into the soil. Few people knew this. Back in the 1990s, researchers issued a report on the post accident condition of the Chernobyl Unit 4 that said that corium deposits should be soaked in nitro absorbing solutions and sealed that was supposed to prevent the elephant's food and other buildups from turning into dust. The main source of radiation on Chernobyl. However, Ukrainian researchers later announced that the treatment with the solutions would do nothing. They then considered that these measures would not prevent the information of radioactive dust anyway. The new shelter too is considered to be the most reliable method of the protection against the spread of radioactive parts from Unit 4. The food fate of lava-like fuel containing materials in the Chernobyl nuclear power plant. Scientists want to find a calculation and analytical method. One of the most radioactive and dangerous places in the Chernobyl zone today is considered a nuclear power plant, and in particular the destroyed fourth unit of the Chernobyl nuclear power plant. Of course, the remains of the fourth unit also emit very strong radiation and will be a big problem when dismantling on the first unit. But the elephant's foot in Chernobyl is still the most dangerous material on the planet. That's all for now. Subscribe to the channel and write your comments to this video.